Okay, Vic, here is the picture that you had sent to me. And I'll show you exactly what I do. And I do this to every single image. This is my process and how I go through things. So, usually I shoot everything underexposed by at least one step, uh, sometimes two. And I will. First thing I do is I'll play with the exposure, highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, and clarity. I don't touch anything else. Every now and then I'll touch the temperature, but it's very rare that I do that. So usually I'll have to go up and see what looks good. In this one, I'll bring it down a little bit. In highlights, I'll go just to get a little more. Shadows will bring up. And here, what I'm looking for, I want the hair. The hair is what I'm really looking at here. And with the highlights, I'm really looking at like the shirt and her skin. Um, the whites, it doesn't look like it does very much, so you can leave it alone. Um, same with the blacks. Actually, Look at the hair again. Um, it is a little bit darker. This looks like it affects the skin a little bit. So maybe I'll bring it up just a tad. Clarity, you can see this does give a little bit of detail. I'll usually go, you know, about five or so. I don't like to go much more than ten, but that's all I touch there. Is exposure, highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, and clarity, and then the image is ready to open up. Normally, I would either start in Lightroom or Capture One and bring it over, but honestly, I didn't want to create a new catalog. But um, yeah, so let's open this up. this down if I hit command zero it's not gonna do it there you go it'll get it to the size I want I'm gonna center that I set this up because this is how it was in the RGG um, tutorial I watched on the commercial retouching so I just kind of did what he did and never changed it back and that before I had the tabs here creating each image but this seems to work a bit better. So what I'll do is hold Z and drag my mouse and I will go into the face. And usually I will be in this close. So what I do next is I will start with frequency separation. And in this case, you know I love this frequency separation 2.0. So I have an action right here, FS low medium. I'm going to run that. This action has a lot of layers on it. So what you want to do is make sure you get the, the fine detail out. So either click here on preview or just hit P. I kind of like hitting P. And I want to, I mean, yeah, I could go up, I think I've gone up as high as like 12. Um, I just kind of play around with numbers, see how 8 looks. And I, this one I'm going to choose this is pretty close. I'm going to go with 8. This might actually be a little too much, but we'll find out here in a minute. I'm going to hit OK. And it's actually going to run that high pass filter or that filter, a medium filter, twice. So, what this is doing is it's running a medium filter. It's 
so it's almost like a service blur. It's yeah, hold on for a second, I can show you where it's at. Okay. Not this one. Okay, so if you want to know where the media filter is, it's under filter, noise, and then median. It's another way and rather than doing Gaussian blur. Uh, if you watch the tutorial on there, it, it shows that the Gaussian blur does create a lot of uh, halos, and when you're using the medium filter, you get to keep those hard edges. So this actually has the high pass filter on. You can see that the picture's kind of crazy. What you have to do is you have to hold Alt. You get this little box with the arrow. You want to click it in between, have it in between the high medium worker and the high medium and then click and it'll show this arrow you see the low medium already has it on there now it's just looking like some disco looking person here it's showing as you can see like all the transitions here between the colors now this is actually coming from the solar layer uh, so this RT right here is the retouch layer I really don't retouch on it so I turn it off and the solar layer I turn off. Now we're back to our normal image. Now this next part that I do, uh, let me turn off the actions. People get mad at me for all the time. Uh, I have my friends say uh, it's not right or whatever, but I mainly retouch as for like magazines and stuff, so I want a clean image. So I'll actually remove some freckles and that. Um, what kind of catches my eye as distracting. Um, it's just what I've always done. Um, you don't have to. Like I said, it's, this has just been my process. But I have a keyboard shortcut set up. So I can use the clone stamp tool. And I will go in here. Like I said, for removing this one here. You can hit Alt to do source. And then cover up. Source and cover up. Source from there, cover up. Source, cover up. And I will just, I won't do this to all of them, just the bare ones. I get rid of some wrinkles here. And this process can be long. Um, let's see if I can do any other. I know a lot of people don't like to work in this close of a uh, area, but I will sometimes do that. Sometimes I'll get in here and I'll get the eyebrow a little bit. Eyebrow right there. Try to be. But like I said, I work closer than. Most people, your eyes probably come out really cool when you highlight them too. Uh, let's see, sometimes I just will zoom out okay, and what grabs my attention. So, here I'll get this spot right here. Since the hair is going over her lip, I don't want to touch it because honestly I'm not that good to get rid of that, especially with how thick this hair is right here. Um, get rid of that. And I mainly just do this on the face sometimes. Because you're starting to get blurry right there. Um, I can kind of go over. Like I said, I don't have anything wrong with uh, the freckles. It's just when I was learning, that's just what I did as I copied one of the other retouchers that was helping me. I'll source from all kinds of areas, it doesn't even have to be nearby. Okay, so let's see. If I hit Command Zero, it'll get back to normal size of the image. And I can turn this off and on, and you see. As close as I was working, and I got rid of those marks. You 
don't really tell. So now we're going to get to the fun part of frequency separation 2.0. So yeah, this space is almost full of snow. Just from the class and I got that way. So next I'm going to go to my low median layer is the higher of the two, the one on top. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here to my brushes and I want the mixer brush. Now I don't mess with these settings up here. That's just what it was during the class. And that's what I kind of kept them at. So wet is 30%, load is 100%, mix 100%. Flow 10%, and I believe this one right here is a smooth, is how it's smoothing. And like I said, I keep those the same. And what this is, is just like a paintbrush. You know, up here I'll make it big, and if I drag it, you can see how it even you know, moves in this area. Um, it's just like a big paintbrush, and we'll blend it in. You see how it looks like this big streak just across her, her face. So I'm going to undo that. I thought I was going to undo that. Let's see. Oh, I think I can undo that. Let's see what's that. So now we're going to zoom in. And I'm basically, each area of the skin, I am, I want to blend this in more. And I'm going to do these small, soft strokes. Just to blend in a little more. Now don't get all crazy with this part like I did. Um, it is very easy to go too far. But I just want to make it more nice and even. And I figured out that if you work in smaller strokes rather than big ones, It'll turn out a lot better. You can see this dark spots underneath the eyes. You can see that lightens up a bit over here. You can see how it's a lot more even over here. And, you know, I've had people ask me, like, well, how far do you? How do you know when to stop? You don't. <laughs> you just gotta look. I'll look at it at that area, at that um, that far away, and then I'll I'll back up farther, and you can see. You know, so it's a much softer face. And I'll do the same here. I'll do a little bit of. Uh, I won't call it contouring, but softening. Another cool trick is. I so I have a set of dip on my keyboard have it for E, but I believe normally it's R. So hold that and this little hand comes up and you can rotate the image so it's at a different angle that's easier to work in with your natural stroke that you have. Uh, I learned that one in critiques class and that made the class worth it just by itself. Blend it a little bit. Now, don't get all crazy with blending it and trying to line up, up the darker areas. And you still want to keep the shadows. I just do this to smoothen it out a bit. So, you know, it's very subtle. Once you do this for a bit, you're, you'll train your eye on it and I will do cover every area of the skin even if it doesn't look like it needs it just to have a little bit of it blended and I, I'm always changing the the size of the brush now look how nice and smooth her skin is so I'm going to turn this on and off and look at how much smoother this 
spot I don't like. Right here, where where her elbow is, where the crease is, on one side. I can really hit that. You gotta be careful with these creases here as you can um, make them more blurry by doing this. And I don't really want that. There we go. As you can see, with very little effort, gotta lock that. Now, now you see how picky I am with this. Okay, right here by her wrist. I see it looks like I haven't done anything at all in this area. So I'm going to make it a little bigger. That looks good to me. So then what I'll do is I'll come here and I will collapse that whole um, action. So lately I have not been using much of dodge and burn. Um, yes, these are just my movements that I want. So I'm gonna hit dodge and burn here. I don't know why it's opening up, but um, it's not supposed to. Okay, so for this dodge and burn, it is, actually, let me go back here. I forgot one thing here. Okay, so I'm gonna try out the dodge and burn. So with this solar layer, if I turn it on, see how all crazy it gets? Now I'm gonna show you what it looked like before. If I turn off the layer that I did all my adjustments on, my, um, my frequency separation 2.0. Look at how more how uh, the the edges are more hard. It's not blended very well. If I turn it on, you can see it's a much smoother transitions between these colors. Look right here where the screen is on her arm. I will turn it. Show my adjustments, and see it's a much smoother transition. So before and after. And I can look here at the arm, look at the face. So that's the before and after. Before, after. I used to just do it on this layer, but there's really no need. I got crazy with it and didn't like it. So I'm going to turn off that solar layer, collapse this. I'm going to go to the dodge and burn layer. And this one, it doesn't even look like it's really necessary. So I'm going to go to my burn layer, and I'm going to add shadows. I pretty much had a contouring chart. Um, one of my friends went to school for makeup. So what I'm going to do, I'm doing this how, how is it? I can't get off of it. How Petite does it. So it's just two curved layers. I want the flow at 1%. This is if you have a tablet, which I know you do. 1% was 100% opacity, and then on the burn, I like to do the strokes, and you want it right there where they put on their makeup, the edge of the hairline, um, to make the nose a little thinner, just go on the outsides of the nose, and you can even go here where the shadow is, and you see it's very subtle. On the dodge layer, you want to do the nose underneath the eyes just a little bit on the forehead, but that much. Now here's a trick that I really like. I'm gonna go back to the burn, zoom into the lips, and the edges of the lips I want to burn. Now this is the part I really like. I'm gonna go up dodge and get the And then also on the burn, I kind of work from head to toe with this. Not that. The outside of the arms, I just do it ever so slightly. You 
because we already did smoothen out the area. So I'm not doing much. And then you can dodge inside. Because remember, whatever you dodge is going to bring that part closer to the camera where burning it, you're taking it farther away. So let's see, I'm gonna burn. I need just enhance that shadow. Off. You see ever so slightly, and it can change, make the face from, from being essentially flat to a little more three dimensional. What else I've always done? I've also done. Um, I don't know if this is gonna work so well because she's got black hair or dark hair. Is I'll see one of the light parts of her hair, and I want to dodge that. So see my hair is a bit brighter. I'm being a bit sloppy with this right now. I'll leave it just a bit bigger. So her hair, you can see, it brings it out ever so slightly. If I want to, I could burn the dark parts of her hair. I really don't want to do much of that because I don't want to lose the detail in that. So let's collapse this layer, turn on and off. School. What I'm going to do is just to save space, I'm going to flatten my image. Did I discard hidden layers? Yes. I'm going to show you the sharpening tool or method that I believe was um, the guy who taught the line exposure portraits, what he does. And I absolutely love this. So I'm going to copy background layer. You can hold Command, Shift, and U to get a uh, black and white layer. And then I'm going to copy it. I'm going to turn the top layer off. And on layer one, I'm going to go to Filter, Other, High Pass. And remember, he likes this at like a four. So I've always kept at this um, for cars and landscapes. I will turn it up to set, you know, any, my area will be anywhere from four to eight. With landscapes and cars, I'll have like six, seven, or eight. So I'm gonna hit okay here. And then we're gonna change the blend mode here. He wants it at either vivid light or hard light. Looks like hard light gives it, it makes it brighter. I've liked vivid light in the past, seems like it's more, um, more of that contrast that I like. So we're going to put on vivid light and then the opacity we want at either 30 or 40%. So I always default it to 40, I've had good luck with that. We're going to turn this layer back on and copy. We're going to go to filter, other, high pass, and then whatever this number is, we're going to put, like since it's 4, we're going to move it to 44. If it's 5, we're going to 55. So this one goes to 44, okay, and this one goes to soft light. And then you want it at 10 to 20%, I default it to 20. So, let's go back, let's turn on the layer and get to it, so let's let's go step by step layer. Now to find the image, I'm going to copy, saturate, copy, high pass. So it's at 40%. So we want to go up here, turn this on, filter, other, high pass, 
44, OK. And we'll put this to soft light. And then we'll drop it down to 20%. Okay, so what this bottom layer is, it's a more of a local sharpening, while the top one is a global sharpening. Let me actually let's zoom in on this. Okay, so that's with them off. And on our off, on we can go here, off, on. Before and after. Then what he does, which is my favorite part, go to actions. I'll have to get you the shortcut for this, but it is a called merge visible stamp. I know you said on create a live the Apotheques media retouching. This is part of his action set. Um, so I'll click on this. I think it's like. Command, Shift, Control, E, or something along those lines. It may, basically, once I click this, it's going to make a stamp, another layer of the stamp. This becomes your new background layer. Now, what I like about this is what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to blending mode, and I'm going to go to screen. I'm not going to make everything real bright. It looks, looks all blown out. Then we're going to go, and we're going to double click on this. And we're worried about or this massive underlying layer. Hold Alt and click on it, and it's gonna should split that little teardrop in two. The right part, we're gonna want to just put all have it all the way over to the right, get darn even. Then we're gonna drag this one over, and what he was looking for was the cheeks and the and how Dark. See if you go too much, it gets too dark. And I'm looking for a little highlight on the cheeks. Looks like we have it right about there. We hit OK. And then we're going to drop this down to 30%. Now, that's, lately, that's where I've been stopping with the image. I would call this complete. So I will hold Alt and click this background. So there's. This background is with our frequency separation and our dodge and burn. And then that's at with our sharpening. I don't even know what you call the last step. Um, it's just, it's a way that uh, how it was explained to me was more of like getting like a silver effect, a little more highlights. See, we got a little more white in the skin, not as much be. And you can even turn this on, and what I like to do just so I can see it is I will, I'll go all the way there. I'll take this back up to 100%. Double click on this. I'll move this a little more. Move it over to the right more so it gets a little darker. And then drop this back down to 30. You can see the before and after. Before and after. I think I still like it a little more this way. Okay. And I'm just looking right here in the cheek area. Um, some highlights. That'll bring out the contrast in the cheeks and that part of the skin more. So there's before, after. See, the sharpening really does a good job. And remember, if you recall from before, I used to darken the eyebrows and brighten up the eyes and all that. And I really, with this method, I really don't even need to do that anymore. Um, she's all in the shadow of this uh, this building back here. So you could brighten up the eyes, but really, I don't see a need um, for there. So. What I do is because with the frequency separation 2.0, what I use, it takes up a lot of space because I've already flattened the image and look, I'm at uh, 482.7 megs. So 
I'm going to flatten it again. And then I'll go with File, Save As, and I'll save it onto my desktop so I can send to you. Save. Continue. Okay. And that is saved. So that's pretty much everything that I do. Like I said, it, nothing too crazy, just complex actions. But once you learn how to use, especially that frequency separation 2.0, that one's a pain in the butt learning. So it'll take at least 10 images to really get that down so I try to knock through those as quick as, as quick as I can and I started liking the results before I realized how good I was getting at it well I still won't call it and say that I'm, I'm really good at it but I didn't realize the progress I was making until I was getting more confidence in my work but I also can see how bring this back when we brighten up the lips, there's a nice, nice and bright, almost like they're wearing, actually wearing like a lip gloss. Um, so yeah, nothing too crazy on this picture. So I'll leave it at that. I don't want this to get too long because I want you to be able to see it. And if you have any more, I'll be glad to do another one.